Ziegler says, the more people you can help get what they want, the more you will get what you want. And that's my goal here today. Is I want to try and share, to, to help, to give as much as I possibly can so that you can get as much as you possibly can from this experience. If you have a look at this little picture up there, it's an aeroplane. And in that aeroplane is your vision, your mission, and the purpose of the, the, the Civil Aviation Authority. Now, my son's a pilot, so he, he sits on the other side of, of uh, what goes on from your side. So we, we got a reasonably good idea of what you guys do and don't do. So first of all, I want to just on his behalf thank you for uh, giving him his uh, commercial pilot's license, etc. Much, much appreciated. Again, it was a long road. And uh, mucho, mucho gracias. You know, I don't know who he brought, but uh, <laughs> whoever it was in the room, thank you very much for that. <laughs> you don't look that old uh, the son is flying. He's not flying under age. <laughs> you know, I, I like him already. <laughs> no, he's 21. But what we really want to do today is I want to unlock something in your brain. Just, just shift. Because if we look at our lives, we, we, we generally view everything in our lives. Small shifts. We look at we look at our situation. We look at our jobs. We look at what everything in our lives, the challenges that we encounter, and we have this picture in our mind, and we see everything has been in our way. If something's in my way, what happens? 9:30 on a Monday morning, 80% of people of heart attacks that occur happen on a Monday morning at 9:30. So people's hearts actually attack them on a Monday morning. There's no physiological or biological reason for that to happen. The reason it happens is because they have this concept in their head that everything is in their way. And if everything's in my way, I've got to get through my week, through my day, through my month. And then I'm a victim <coughs> of my circumstances. What I want us to do today, the first thing I want you to do today, the first takeaway I want you to take away is I want you to start looking at the same situation and instead of seeing it being in your way, shift and see the same circumstances as being on my way. How do I make that shift? Well, as soon as I have a vision, as soon as I have a dream, as soon as I have a clear, crystal clear picture in my head of exactly what I want in my future, then the same circumstances that were in my way before and I hated them are now on my way. They're on my way to that vision on my way to that picture of the future that, that I have. So that's the first thing that I want you to do, is I want you to open your mind, and I want you to look into the future, and I want you to get a crystal clear picture of exactly what you want that future to look like. When they take Olympic athletes, and they stick all these little electrodes on their legs, and they ask them to run a 100 meter race, as they run the race, the muscles fire and trigger at different times. They ask that same athlete to lie down on a bed and to imagine they're running the race. And exactly the same muscles fire at exactly the same time as though they're actually doing the activity. So our brain doesn't know the difference between a visualized idea and reality. So when you start creating that visualized picture in your head about that future that you want, a crystal clear picture of what you want in your future, in other words, You've made the shift from everything is no longer in my way, it's on my way. You now look at the same situation with a hungry mind and you ask yourself this question. What can I get from my day? What can I get from this hour that we're going to spend together? What is in it for me? And that's what I want you to unlock. Is don't sit here and go, this darn conference thingy majobi, I hate them, okay? and it's in my way and I just want to get to damn lunch because I'm starving, but rather sit here with an open mind and start saying to yourself, this is a golden opportunity. A golden opportunity to learn, to gather, to glean, to get the most valuable use or the most value from the next hour. It's only a shift, same situation, you're sitting in the same room. You can either sit here with a modality, with a mentality that how am I going to get through this next hour? Or you can shift and say, what am I going to get from this next hour? How can I turn this next hour into the most valuable use of my time? 
And once you make that small shift, once you start to look at things a little bit differently, everything changes. Because if you want the world to change, I can't change the president easily. Interest rates are what they are. The economy just is the way it is. What can I change? One thing. Me. So if I want the world to change, I need to change. I need to change the way I look at things. And the things I look at will change. What I want to do is I want to ask you to choose a shape. Four shapes. Triangle, circle, square, and a squiggly shape. Now, our personalities, we, we generally choose something that picks our personality. Well, a show of hands, who, who would be the circles in the room? Circles. Great. They are generally people who don't like boxes, they don't like corners, they don't like traditional things. They're kind of out there thinkers. Generally, they're very, very undisciplined bunch of people. <laughs> the, the, the squares, any, any, any squares in the room? Squares. Squares are, are red. Circles, you get yourself a square. Okay? Squares are traditionally accountants. They're people who like order. They like things to be the way they should be. Okay? Circles, most definitely get yourself a square. Any triangles in the room? Triangles. Oh my goodness. Triangles are the most driven people you will ever meet in your life. They will do anything to get to the top of an organization. Get their business cards. <laughs> and then, of course, the squiggly shapes. Squiggly shapes? Oh, I would, no, just, uh, squiggly shapes, I would never ask you to identify yourself. <laughs> squiggly shapes are generally only interested in booze and sex. <laughs> but, but other than that, they, they really are out there, people. They don't like traditional shapes, traditional squares, circles. They're really out there thinkers. They are, in fact, how did you guys get here today? Why are you even here? <laughs> the squiggly shape. No, they really, they really are amazing people. Squiggly shapes are your creative people in the group. They're the people that, that are the out-of-the-box thinkers, the people that see things that other people don't generally see. Those are your squiggly shapes. Who here in the room thinks they've got the worst job in the country? And I know you don't want to raise your hand because you're sitting there and you're going, you know what, Andrew? If my boss had to check me to raise my hand, okay, this would be dangerous, Ted. But you know who you are, okay? I want you to look at this picture. Okay, who in the room now thinks they've got the worst job in the world? Okay, they cannot be. Okay, maybe a gynecologist or a, a podiatrist may be a little worse, okay, but it doesn't get a lot worse than that. <laughs> look at your situation, look at your job, look at your life. And this is what I'm wanting you to, to change. This is what I'm wanting you to just get the shift. The same situation. Two kids on a roller coaster ride. The one kid is exhilarated by the thought of getting on a ride where he's out of control and loves the thing. The other kid is a real square and really and likes to be in control, likes to know exactly what's, what's happening in his life. They get on the roller coaster ride, this thing goes off, the one kid is throwing his hands in the air, loving it. The other kid's hanging on with white knuckles for dear life, thinking, what? Ah, get over with. The ride finishes. They get to the end of the ride. Am I right in saying it was one event? Two reactions. Two perceptions. One kid is jumping up and down with a hand in the air going, let's do it again. I loved it. The other kid's knees are shaking and going, take me to the doctor. You know what I'm saying? Same event. What about your life? The stuff that's going on in your life. Is it bad? <coughs> or do you just believe it's bad? Is there such a thing as a bad day? Because when you're having, when you're having your worst day of your life, I'm having the best day of my life. So where does the concept of bad day exist? Right here. So it's all a choice, isn't it? I choose to have a bad day. I choose to wake up in the morning, and you know what? 
Life happens. I get out of bed and so I stub my toe. Okay, choice number one. My day is going to spiral out of control and I'm just going to, my toothbrush is going to hit me in the back of the mouth. <laughs> now it is a bad day. Get in my car, my, it won't stop. Things are just, you know what? It couldn't be worse. Different choice. Stub my toe. Oof. Hell, okay. Be careful with the toothbrush, okay? Car won't stop. No big deal. Uh, babe, why don't you bring the jumpers? Let's get this thing going. It's all a choice. I can either choose to allow myself to go, this is terrible, or I can say, you know what? It's physically impossible to live a single one-sided positive life only. There's as much good as there is bad. There's challenges, <coughs> and in fact, very often the challenges that we encounter in our lives are the catalysts that unlock opportunity, unlock things that we wouldn't have generally seen. Do you know that if Winston Churchill had have died at the age of 63, we wouldn't have even known who he was. He became Prime Minister at 65. And the fact that he'd lost election after election, the fact that he'd gone through all the trials, the tribulations, all the things that he'd gone through in his life, were the very catalysts, the very things that allowed him to buoy a whole nation on his shoulders. His rhetoric, his words, took a whole nation and they defeated the Germans. Imagine if he hadn't have gone through all that failure. You've all heard of Colonel Saunders, I'm sure. You know the guy that makes Kentucky? Any idea how old he was when he started Kentucky Fried Chicken? 63. All he had, he had $200 and a chicken recipe. And he went around and he went from shop to shop to shop. <laughs> 1,009 people said to him, listen buddy, I've got my own chicken recipe. Don't come here and waste my time with another chicken recipe. And, and, and sorry, what, you want what? You want a share of my profits for the rest of my life because you got a chicken recipe you out of your mind. 1,009 people said no. How many people in this room would have stopped at the first no, or the 50th, or the 100th. Jack Canfield, he is the most prolific author in the world. The only man to have seven number one New York Times bestsellers at the same time in history. He sold over 120 million copies of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. 142 publishers said, <coughs> Please, short stories. Who is going to buy short stories? They've done it so many, it's rubbish. <laughs> Publisher 143 said, let's give it a go. 120 million copies later, 57 languages. Would you have given up? Imagine if he gave up at 142. He now flies around the world in jets. He lives an amazing life. Why? Because he didn't give up. You don't need to give up either.